they commented that you don't think those those fucking shooters. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, when I was hired on the show, by that time I sort of moved past any interest in this material, so it's an opportunity to fell back to my own boy. Uh, we got to do the Flash stuff on the Trickster on the Flash, we did the Nightshade stuff as well, which had a totally different tone. Um, but it was a real opportunity to get, you know, as, as Gail pointed out as we were watching this, it's much lighter and goofier than, than, than a lot of the other episodes of the series. And, and there was just an opportunity for comedy. And Danny did a great job of directing. He had some really solid stuff. And, uh, and this, is, this is my first job in television. Um, I got hired while I was in New York uh, pitching a, a, a book in, at DC that never happened. And I got I had, and I got an agent out here who basically sold, kicked me on a robust and sold me down the river, you guys. Uh, it was great. They, they got me incredibly cheap. And, um, but I had, a, and it was the best professional experience I've ever had in my life. And that's not a joke. Everything else was like asking to. Um, but uh, and, uh, the, but I'm quite serious. And it was just an amazing crew. An amazing. I mean. I met people that I will I will gladly go to the memorial with good faith. You and John Francis were my hostages. That's right, and I and, and, and cameos. <laughs> well, everybody was everybody we all did the show the last episode. We were all embarrassed and shamed. We all in the last episode. Camera. Yeah, a lot of us were in the last episode. Where were you, Paul? Were Danny and Danny the side 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 at the end, oh. Oh. anticipating a career. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. The two guys hanging up the sign at the end, and uh, and Michael Laco was the guy selling the T-shirts at the beginning. He got lines. And uh, our Brad, friend Brad, Brad was the waiter. Yes. Brad back there somewhere was the waiter, reprising his role as a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there, everybody was. Yeah, uh, was, in, was yeah you were in the police station with my daughter. With his daughter, right? That's Gail. Gail was the head writer on the Gail, show. Gail, 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 Gail. Mike Genovese played Perry White over there. <laughs> uh, Joyce, you know, you, your, your character in these two episodes is so cool. Megan is, uh, is in fact, maybe as heroic or more heroic than The Flash. Can you sort of talk about playing her and uh, showing John what heroism is all about? <laughs> exactly. It's funny because I'm watching it and I'm thinking, I was a really shitty detective. <laughs> First of all, who holds a gun like that? <laughs> what was I doing? <laughs> it was just like, and um, he always got away from me, so how did I ever become successful? <laughs> you threw a mean punch. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was an empowered woman. Still do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you took me down with one. One good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the, the judge is played by Parley Bear. <laughs> It's just astonishing. He has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of credits. Probably his most famous role is when Lucy Ricardo goes in to get Ricky released from his uh, contract at MGM, and he's the head of the studio. But I couldn't get over it. I was just, I mean, he was on Ozzy and Aaron. If you watch television in the 50s and 60s, he was on at least 50 shows a year. And I don't recognize him immediately. Barley Bear! <laughs> He has almost as many credits as Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Bruce, talk about uh, directing the show. Talk about the, the... I didn't direct either one of these. Well, the show... <laughs> <laughs> the the well, Flash I, in general. Uh, at, the, least, uh, at least my name was... My last name was certainly up there. <laughs> very proud of Danny and Paul and their company and everybody here uh, because Danny and Paul just ran a great, great show. Whatever they did, the Flash was great, the Viper was great. Yes. Uh, Woo! The was great. And uh, there's other people here. Benjamin, Bob Benjamin is hiding behind that light back there. He did the transportation. Yes. Now, did anybody see a little thing with a truck and a few cars go on? <laughs> Stand up, Benji. It's a tall guy. We got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> 
He, got <laughs> uh, he became a producer of Viper after that. Right. right. And he was a good a pro better producer even. Oh, he and he was a transportation. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a great transportation. I think it really means something that there's so many of you guys here and there's more folks from the show in the audience. I mean, this is obviously a show that you guys really loved doing. Uh, can you talk about, you know, whoever wants to jump in, what was your favorite memory of making the show? What was, was it something you did on screen? Was it, you know, the, the camaraderie that you guys had behind the camera? One thing for me was that I, I remember that that year Burbank Studios had just been renamed Warner Brothers and they had just freshly painted the water tower so that when you're coming over Barham and you'd see Warner Brothers Studios and to know that I had a parking lot on that set, you know, it was just amazing. You know, we were always, we had about a third of the lot back in those days and we'd be shooting uh, uh, day for night and, you know, we'd be tending in the back lot. We'd be leaving work as the executives were coming to work and they were like, man, you guys are insane. You know, but that, that, that's what it took to... Uh, to do the show, it was amazing. Yeah, about, about day three of our episodes, our guest stars would be like, you mean you do this every week? <laughs> we started, remember the episode we started at like 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning. They woke the director up and he was like, are you kidding me? Was like, Sadly, no. <laughs> it was always the Star Lab scene that were shot like at four in the morning. And I could tell, you could see, it was, it was really rough. <laughs> but there's two things that were really funny and they were from this episode. One was when the, when the statue blew up it was when the Gulf War started. And we had this explosion on the back lot and the whole lot freaked out because they thought we were being attacked. <laughs> it's true, and security came down and, and, and all of that. The other one, from, it was from the same episode. One of my, my biggest memories was actually, and I think she's here somewhere, Mark's daughter. I walked on the set and Mark was standing on the street with his hair like this and Lana, who's not here tonight, who was the hair, hair person, said, you gotta see this. And I looked down, and there was this three-year-old girl with the exact same hair, <laughs> and she said, I have quick to hair. <laughs> and I think she's here somewhere. Chelsea, are you here? Yeah. <laughs> she's grown up now. Yeah. One of my favorite memories of, from the last episode was uh, I couldn't wait to get out of that suit, truth be told. You know, as wonderful as it was visually. But uh, at the, after the last shot, we were at 5 a.m. down in southeast Los Angeles somewhere. Remember, we did the last shot and I took the ears and I ripped them off and threw them in the air. Well, Mark almost lost his mind. <laughs> he was like, don't let him get away! <laughs> like climbing over cables and <laughs> <laughs> didn't, we, didn't we give you a suit, Mark? Uh, you mean a, not a flash oh, a suit? suit. Did we? Did we? we gave I a know suit you gave point. me the trickster bear. Uh oh. Uh, if you did give me the suit, I haven't been in it since, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nasty if we did. <laughs> but see, you know, for me, it was like the material was so much fun, and you just you're you're painting in such broad strokes. It's like fairy tales for children, and. Uh, I thought, this is the closest I'll ever get, because I grew up watching the Adam West Batman, and I thought, this is the closest I'm ever going to get. I mean, I'm a trickster mobile, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm loving it. So, and, uh, but it, like I say, all of these people uh, uh, have contributed so much to the, the, the overall, every little, I mean, Richard Belser, Timothy Stack, Vincent, who's here tonight, Ambrosio, I mean, He's he's in my trickster episode up in, uh, in Hollywood North. <laughs> Vote for him. me. Vote for him. Yes, yeah, he's, <laughs> <real life. laughs> he's now the mayor <laughs> of, uh, of Central City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five years of law enforcement paid off. <laughs> but I had a blast, and I remember Paul and Danny saying, "Well, in the second season, we're going to." kick off with a two-hour premiere, we're going to team up all of you guys. And I said, you mean who? And he said, well, like Mirror Master and various villains, which is really one of the hallmarks of the Flash comics, is that the, the rogues gallery was second only to Batman. And 
I still am mad that they... I'm, You're I, mad. I, <laughs> yeah, we had to wait 24 years for a little flash episode. It's <laughs> Andrew Kreisberg. <laughs> and his hair. For the first time when I walked on to do the pilot of the new show, and he said, you know, we've already met. I said, we have? He said, yes. He said, I was an assistant on the back lot at Warner Brothers when you were shooting The Flash. And he said, I totally came up and introduced myself, and I was like, was I nice? <laughs> <laughs> it must have been so always, you never know who's going to be your boss. <laughs> So you guys are getting to do on the new Flash a lot of stuff they had hoped to be able to do on the old Flash. Can you talk about how the original Flash show influences you guys today on the new show? Uh, I, it's bizarre for me to be standing up here because I should just I feel like I should be in the audience. <laughs> um, you know, I, we were Jeff and Greg and I were just such huge fans of the show. You know, when, if you grew up a DC Comics fan, like right around 89, 80, all of a sudden you had Tim Burton's Batman, and then you had this show, and it just felt like all of your childhood dreams were coming true. And uh, and the show, I mean, it's great. I mean, you look at it. I mean, it's. I mean, you, you see. You know, we get a lot of credit for doing this giant movie every week, but you see what went into, you know, making those episodes, especially the last one. I mean, and you guys didn't have any, I mean, it wasn't digital. You guys blew all that stuff up. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, it, it meant the world to us. And there, there's, I mean, if you watch, um, you know, if you watch our, our iteration, you see so many nods to it. And, and not just the literal nods, you know, we've been so blessed to have John and Mark and Vito and hopefully many more to come, but, you know, uh, in the future. There were so many things that just, that, that um, oh, and Amanda, um, and, uh, but, um, you know, even, like, one of the things that we were doing the pilot was the, your take on the suit, that, you know, Barry Allen just didn't suddenly decide to dress up like a superhero, you guys had this great take on it, which was that it was a deep-sea submersible suit, and it was, it was made by the Soviets, which is why it was red.